gosh. Oh gosh! You know what you're doing? Hopefully. Holy! I'm here at the actual track in Vegas where in a few moments, the fastest race cars in the world will be flying around this corner at 80 miles per hour. So it'd be a real shame if I just dropped this here. This is actually one of the most dangerous corners on the track, and not because of my off the books modification. It's actually because if you're taking a corner at 80 miles per hour, your body is experiencing the effects of 5Gs, which is nearly double what the astronauts feel when they get launched into space. But what even is a G? Well, at least in science, a G means one G or the normal amount of force we feel all the time as the Earth tries to pull us towards its center, but the ground stops us. So like, if there was no gravity, then this orange would just float here like an astronaut in space. But with the force of 1G, it gets pulled down like this. But what if the Earth was five times as dense? Well, then gravity would be five times stronger. And then us and the orange would experience 5Gs. So instead of falling at the 1G speed, it would fall at the 5G speed. Which is not only bad news if you're an orange, but it should give you an appreciation of what the driver's bodies go through for nearly two hours as they constantly accelerate and turn and brake, feeling the forces from up to five Gs in just a bunch of different directions. And speaking of which, I very regrettably agreed to take a nearly 200 mile an hour test lap around the track the night before the race to experience those Gs firsthand. And so to help distract my mind from its impending doom, I think I'm gonna head down to the strip for a bit. By the way, you might be wondering why I'm even here, and that's because the Las Vegas Grand Prix had a problem. They've got hundreds of thousands of people coming to town, all of whom will be concentrated in one part of the city. Now that kind of sudden influx would totally overwhelm the current wireless cellular infrastructure. We all know what it's like when you're meeting up with a friend at a big event with lots of people, and even a simple text message grinds to a complete halt, which is exactly why they came to T-Mobile with the crazy challenge of making sure not only all the guests can use their phones seamlessly, but also that all the vendors don't lose a butt ton of money from constant network failures. And so after hearing all that, this was the plan and T-Mobile came up with. But first, I gotta make a racetrack. Normally, to support the typical amount of people on their phones for the coverage area of a four-mile racetrack, they have 14 cell sites. But for this weekend, their plan was to almost quadruple it to 52. And so by doing this, and a bunch of other super important infrastructure things, they're claiming everything's gonna run beyond seamless. Even to the point, where if hypothetically, everybody recorded a video and uploaded at the same time, the network would totally be able to handle it. But as a man of science and a firm believer in the scientific method, I'm here to test that bold claim. So I headed out to the stands to conduct a trusty internet speed test. It's great, 280. Woo, blazing hot, dang, 125 up. And although I was impressed when I had the whole network to myself, the real question was how would these speeds hold up tonight when everyone arrived? But first, we needed an extreme network test. We need another data point. So we're going up to the sky to see how good the coverage is up there. And since I'd heard my buddy Marquez was also in town for the race, I thought I'd try and give him a call from a thousand feet in the air. Marquez, what's up, buddy? I cannot hear you at all, but uh, yeah, connection isn't bad. All right, went up in this beast, FaceTime Marquez, ran some speed tests, which means now it's time to do some real work. Turns out, the speeds are also great in the hot tub. And as the pre-race crowd started showing up, it was time for the real network stress tests. And as you can see, I wasn't the only one getting hyped over these 500 plus network speeds. After that, I FaceTimed my brother in the stands for a bit of moral support, since the time had finally arrived to subject my body to the cruel laws of physics. I'm down here in pit row, I'm about to go on one of those cars, and I'm terrified. People are coming off sweating and shaking. This would be the ultimate speed test. Realizing I should have been. To examine their network's 5G. Here we go! While hitting 5G. Oh gosh. Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! You know what you're doing? Hopefully. Brakes? <laughs> what about brakes? Hopefully. <laughs> Is this on purpose? Holy! We're like a centimeter from that wall! Oh, I've had a good life at least! You know what? I had a great ride! You did it! <laughs> wow! That was insane! Oh, that was crazy! I only peed a little. 
and that's a W in my book. 5G test after pulling 5Gs, 250. Touche, T-Mobile. Touche. And with that, it was time for the real race to start. I got to watch the race with Marquez and a few other friends, and it was so captivating, I didn't miss a second. And I mean, thanks to the network, didn't miss a second. The race was not only thrilling, but as they promised, T-Mobile executed their plan and stuck the landing. And I suppose that shouldn't have been a surprise, because after trying two other networks first for the third year in a row, they'll be powering all my holiday glitter bombs. So with that, plus their invite to the race, that means not only they give me a better network, but also a new addiction to feeling those G's. <laughs> This is how you do Vegas. We did it!